Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our GSA webinar this evening, all about our visual art program. Uh, we're so glad that you've joined us. Uh, we have a pretty exciting conversation planned this evening. So uh, before we jump in, we'd love to learn a little bit more about, looks like we have uh, 27 people joining us in real time right now. Um, so if you are able, uh, hop into the chat, uh, say hi to the group, let everyone else know uh, your first name and maybe what county you're in. Hey, Grace. Hi, Amy in Pike County. Awesome. Representing our easternmost county. Oh, we got a couple folks from Pike. A few folks from Warren. Hello, Lane and Aiden. Sawyer from McLean. That's awesome. Or McLean. I think I, I think I said that wrong. I think it's McLean County. Callaway. Right. Hey, Sarah from Jessamine County. Awesome. Well, feel free to keep saying hi to each other in the chat. Um, hello, Naomi. Uh, and you all are welcome to connect with each other there. Of course, we've got plenty of information we'll be sharing with you. But once you all feel connected to each other as well as young artists from across the state of Kentucky, I'm going to launch a poll really quickly. Um, and in this poll, we're just learning a little bit more about you if you're a student or if you're a parent. Uh, we know you're interested in visual art, but what art form are you interested in? And feel free to click other art forms if there's some other art forms that you might have an interest in. Just want to know if you've uh, attended a previous webinar or watched a recording of one this fall, and if you've applied to GSA before. So um, if you have, that would mean you're currently a junior and you applied as a sophomore. I'll give you just a few more seconds to fill out that poll. Sawyer from McLean County, we had, a, I think, an alum from your county a few years ago named, I think, Lathan Vargason, who went on to win, like, a National Arts Award. Just a random little memory I have of someone else from your county. All right. I'm going to go ahead and end this poll. Let's see what we got here. So every single person who answered this poll is a student that gets currently eligible to apply for GSA. That is awesome. So I salute you all for taking ambition and um, taking control of your application process. It looks like um, you all have a lot of different interests in other art forms, architecture design, creative writing, film and photo, a few performing art forms, that's great. Most of you have uh, seen a previous webinar, that's awesome. Um, and a few of you have applied for GSA, but for most of you, um, this is gonna be your first time applying, so that's just good to know. All right, so I want to now move on to uh, introducing a few folks that we have um, on the webinar tonight. Um, first off, I want to introduce my, my fellow GSA admin colleagues. Um, uh, joining me today is GSA's program manager, Paula O. Lockhart. Hey, Paula. Awesome. I get we can't hear you, but let's see. No. Well, while you're, while you're trying to um, see if you can um, fix that, I'll also introduce our program coordinator, Aminata Ja Finch. Oh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hey, Ami. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good. Good, good. Yes. <laughs> so Ami is our program coordinator and is um, often going to be the person that you interact with when you're calling our helpline or interacting with GSA Info. And uh, Paula, let's see if we can hear you. Hello, hello. Testing one, hey. two, three. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad that y'all joined us here tonight to learn more about GSA and visual art. Um, as Nick mentioned, I am the program manager here at GSA. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, um, like Ami, I'll be here to help you out. Awesome. Thanks, Paula and Ami. Thanks for being mm -hmm. here tonight. Yes. And then last but certainly not least, our uh, sort of guest of honor this evening, if you will, uh, is a gentleman named Matthew Gaddy. Uh, I call him Gaddy. You're going to hear me call him Gaddy a lot. I hope that's all right um, uh, tonight. But um, Matthew Gaddy is on our visual art faculty. Uh, and Gaddy, tell us a little bit more about yourself, both in the GSA world, but also outside the GSA world. Well, uh, I think this is my 
six year on faculty, and I think it's my fourth year as the as the department chair. Uh, but believe it or not, way back in the day, in 1998, when grunge music was still cool, uh, I was a student at GSA for the visual arts, and then went on and uh, went to University of Evansville. And then uh, after that, I uh, went to Hood College in Frederick, Maryland and received my, my MFA in ceramics. And here recently, uh, with also being the chair at Governor School, I'm also on the faculty at Hanover College, just outside of Madison, Indiana. And uh, in the interim between being at Hanover and being at GSA for 15 years, I ran a, a full-time studio pottery business called the Meadows Pottery and uh, did 15, 20 shows a year and built kilns in, in the, in the part-time. Awesome. And Gaddy, uh, you're located in Nelson County, right? Yep. Yep. Born and raised. I, after I uh, got done with school, I came home. So that's great. And I have, I, have, I have to brag on Gaddy. I have an original Matthew Gaddy work right here on my chest. <laughs> uh, Gaddy is an amazing ceramicist. Uh, definitely check out his work if you all haven't already. Um, so we're going to, uh, Tonight's mostly going to be a conversation between me and Gaddy about the visual art program and the application process. Uh, but before we start that conversation, uh, I'm going to take us through just a real quick review, of some fast facts about GSA. Um, for those of you, um, and I know many of you have, have attended one of these before, this is going to be an even quicker review than you've seen before. So hang tight for just a couple minutes, and then we'll come back to Gaddy and talk more about visual art specifically. <clears throat> right. Uh, there is going to be a Q&A after today's session. Um, we are also being live streamed on Facebook. So if you're watching us um, live on Zoom, feel free to use that Q&A feature anytime to ask a question. Uh, we'll come back to the questions at the end, um, but uh, and you can ask questions at the end as well, but we will take time for that. Uh, also, if you're watching us live on Zoom today, you will, you will receive a survey that should pop up at the end of the webinar. Um, please take that survey. It's really helpful in um, GSA's ability to assess our recruitment efforts and making sure that we're reaching as many folks as possible. All right, so um, if you aren't already aware, today's session is part of a larger series of virtual info sessions that GSA is hosting throughout the autumn for applicants, parents, and educators. Uh, we got started back on October 6th with GSA 101. It's sort of a big overview of the summer program and uh, the application process. On October 13th, we walked through applicant guides and talked about how to use those. We'll look at visual arts applicant guide today in our conversation as well. On November 3rd, we did a webinar where we walked through um, the application of portal itself and what it's like to submit an application. And the recordings of all of these are available on our website, the same page where you would register for this webinar. So this month, we've got these art form specific webinars. Next month, we'll, we'll repeat GSA 101. And on December 15th, we'll literally just be on Zoom to see what questions you have. Um, but these webinars are not the only way and not necessarily the best way to ask your questions of us. So you can give us a call or email us anytime. Uh, we've got the GSA helpline up here, 502-566-5192. You can email us at gsainfo at kentuckyperforming.arts.org. And you all, you all can also keep up with us on our social media channels. Program name on Facebook and at KYGSA on Instagram. All right, let's just quickly review some information about the GSA Summer Program. Um, GSA Summer Program is a three-week residential program that takes place on a college campus. Students attend GSA for one of nine art forms, and the program is tuition-free. And if you haven't heard, we recently made the very exciting announcement that we're able to double the size of the Summer Program for the next three years. And that's thanks to supplemental funding provided by the Kentucky Department of Education. So this means we expect to grow from our previous class size of 256 to accepting approximately 500 students for the summer of 2022. So we're still finalizing exactly how, when, and where this expansion will take place. And there's probably gonna be questions you might have about the expansion that we just don't have answers for quite yet. That said, we will definitely release any and all information as soon as we have it. What we do know is that GSA summer program will take place in June and or July of next summer, and at least part of the student body will have their GSA experience on the campus of our current host institution, the University of Kentucky. 
Now, we're looking at how many students have applied to each art form over the past few years to help inform the total number of student spots for each art form in our expanded model. Meaning that while the total number of students we accept across all art forms will double, some art forms will grow in size more than others so that each art form uh, has as similar as possible an acceptance ratio to the other art forms. So essentially that there's not one art form that's easier to get into than the other. Uh, while, the, while these numbers are subject to change for visual art, we currently anticipate that we'll go from a total of 36 student spots in visual art, which is what we've been able to accept for the past few years, to a total of 80 student spots. So again, that is subject to change, but um, that is where, where, where we're, what we're planning for currently, going from previously 36 student spots in visual art to 80. So that's great news for you all as applicants. You must be a sophomore or junior to apply, uh, so currently a sophomore or junior. Um, we're never going to ask for your GPA, SAT, or ACT scores during the application process, and you can apply for up to two art forms. There is an application fee of $30 or $35 total if applying at two art forms, but the fee is waived by the click of a button in the application for students who qualify for free and reduced lunch. Uh, remember, we're thrilled to talk to you about visual art today, but it's not going to be 100% comprehensive. So make sure you're going to our website and looking up information. Um, the website's KentuckyGSA.org. You're definitely going to want to find the applicant guide that we'll be reviewing today and, and make sure to read that thoroughly for yourself so that you can start preparing and uploading your materials nice and early. So that application is due by January 9th. Um, note this, this is a Sunday. The GSA office is not going to be staffed on the weekend. So that means that two days before this, Friday the 7th of January is the last day to call our emails with questions. And we definitely recommend you completing your application at least one week in advance of that January 9th deadline. Um, students will learn if they've advanced to the second and final round of auditions and reviews on February 18th, which is about one month before the final round of auditions and reviews take place on so March 18th and 19th. Those auditions and reviews, the final round usually take place in person at the University of Kentucky, um, although given the end of COVID, you can expect to learn more about that process later in the application cycle. And we'll welcome, or excuse me, we'll announce the GSA class of 2022, uh, as well as any alternates on the wait list on April 15th. And then there you can see GSA 2022 will take place in June and or July. All right, so now let's dive into the more visual art specific part of our conversation today. Um, and what I'm going to do is we'll welcome Gaddy back, and I am going to pull up our website and both show you all how to get to the visual art applicant guide, and then we'll just go through and review it kind of piece by piece. I'll review what's in it, and then we'll have a conversation with Gaddy about what um, we're looking for um, in that specific aspect of the, the visual art application. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen again real quick. So this is GSA's um, homepage, KentuckyGSA.org. If you go right here to this section that says GSA 2022 application important dates and virtual info sessions, it's going to take you to our prospective students section. <clears throat> and then um, important dates, info sessions, and deadlines. You all probably know that page because it's probably where you had to go to register for today. That's also where you can find the recordings of webinars. Here's the applicant guide section. Just a quick note that down here is where you can actually access the application itself. It's now open. I'm going to click Review Applicant Guides, go all the way down to Visual Art here, and voila, here is our Visual Art Applicant Guide. <clears throat> so I'm going to zoom in here a bit so that hopefully if you all are joining us on a smaller screen, you're able to see some of this. So the first part of the Applicant Guide is a program description. And what this is, is this is a description of what it's like to study any given art form at the summer program. Um, so this is actually the, probably the one time I'm going to read the applicant guide verbatim, and then we'll go back to Gaddy to learn a little bit more. Um, so GSA's visual art program includes studio classes in three areas of concentration. One, drawing and painting. Two, sculpture and ceramics. And three, traditional printmaking. Students attend studios in all three areas throughout the program. Special workshops are conducted by distinguished visiting artists. Students view and learn about the work of these artists as well as that of their own GSA faculty. Instructors and students critique and reflect on their works in progress, individually and in groups, both in oral and written formats. Studio sessions are augmented by field trips and slide presentations. Students learn about writing artist statements, art professions and careers, and portfolio preparation for college applications. A juried gallery exhibition of student work is displayed on the final day of the program, 
another student work is presented in an open house format to the rest of the students. So that's a pretty comprehensive overview, but let's go back to Gaddy. Um, so Gaddy, just tell us a little bit more <clears throat> about what it's like to study visual art at GSA Summer Program. Well, I mean, I think, uh, I think the best way to describe it is uh, it's kind of art boot camp. Uh, you're going to get up in the morning and have your breakfast and have your morning announcements with the with the entire student body, and then you'll break <clears throat> into your visual art group and head over to the studio and hit the studio by nine o'clock. And then we are working as is pretty much as hard as we can go until one. We break for lunch. We come back at two. We go as hard as we can until six and we break for dinner and then sometimes we come back at seven and go till 10. Uh, studio nights are about 50% of the time, would you say, Nick? Uh, about 50-50. Sometimes you'll have an evening performance. Sometimes you'll have a studio night. Now, how the three studios work, which actually I think this year uh, we might stick with how we had to do it last year and go to four. We had to do four last year because of social distancing and we could only have so many students in each studio and we broke ceramics and sculpture actually completely out. Uh, we're still talking about that as we, especially as we are finding out that we're picking up more students, that may be even more so the case, but it's basically on a rotation. And sometimes you may rotate to each studio every day and sometimes you may only hit two in a day. So, for example, you might come in on Monday and spend the morning in ceramics, the afternoon in uh, drawing and painting, and the evening in printmaking. And then the next day, you might come back and spend morning and afternoon in ceramics. Uh, that that whole thing kind of ebbs and flows over the course of the of the of the program where at the beginning we're trying to get in a lot of demos and a lot of um, quick turnover so people can get up and running in each studio and then in the middle section of this of the program we kind of stretch it out so students have more time to really get into their work and then by the end of the program we're kind of wrapping it up and trying to document everything did that uh answer the question <laughs> yeah, yeah i think so Okay. Um, yeah, and, and uh, I'll just remind all of our folks who are watching, um, you know, we have that Q&A feature here in Zoom. So if uh, you're sitting there uh, wondering more about what it's like to uh, attend GSA at the Summer Program for Visual Art, feel free to pop your questions in the Q&A and we'll make sure to circle back to them. But no, now, there are, a lot, there are a lot of other things going on at that same time. We may be having visiting artists coming in and meeting all as a group. We may be going on a field trip for a whole day meeting all as a group. Uh, I think all that's going to come about in the planning section where we find out whether we're still going to be under pro, uh, COVID protocols or whether we're going to be back to like the pre-pandemic plan. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we are certainly hoping for and planning for a, as normal of an in-person program as, as possible next year. So <laughs> All right, so I'm going to share my screen again, and we will pop back over into the applicant guide to continue our conversation. <clears throat> so after the program description section, we have the preliminary round application requirements. So this is the most, uh, I guess, one of the most relevant areas for applicants because this is telling you what you need to upload into your application by January 9th. So the first section is about the recommendation forms, uh, the recommendation process. I'm actually going to stop sharing my screen while I talk about this a little bit because there's just a lot of text there. Um, for those of you who have applied to GSA in the past, I know some of you have, um, there have been some changes here. So maybe if you haven't applied before, but you know someone who has, this may be a difference. Um, in the past, we've had two recommenders that students um, uh, provide information for in their application. So the number's not changed. But in the past, we've said one of those has to be a teacher and one of those has to be a school administrator. You're pretty uh, pointed about what their job titles need to be, if you will. This year, we're just saying that you need two recommenders, and it doesn't matter. One of them doesn't have to be a school administrator. One of them doesn't necessarily have to be a teacher, although a lot of people are going to end up using a teacher. Uh, and if you can find one or two people for those recommendations who know you as an artist, who know your creative work, 
that's great. I mean, I strongly encourage you to choose those goals. That being said, we completely understand not every GSA applicant is going to necessarily have that. So in that case, we encourage you to find someone who knows your character, um, maybe knows you in a learning environment or a community environment. So that could be someone at an organization you volunteer for, a youth minister. Um, they can be teachers inside or outside of school. So it could be a math teacher or if you have, um, you know, a, a dance teacher outside of school, they could be that person. Um, so that all being said, Gaddy, tell us a little bit more both about what you think makes a good recommendation and also some, maybe some things that our applicants should think about when they're selecting their recommenders and talking to their recommenders about um, why they want to attend GSA and why they think they're a good fit. Yeah, I, uh, you know, just to hit that point about uh, not necessarily having to have a teacher in your in your school, actually, when I applied, my art teacher at my school didn't write me a letter of recommendation. I actually had a uh, another artist in town. I was taking, uh, I would say, kind of a class. It was more just kind of get together and paint uh, in town. And uh, the the lady who ran that program actually uh, wrote my letter of recommendation. So uh, you know, keep an open mind about who that person might be. But I, I think you know Nick spoke to it pretty well in a sense that try and find somebody who can speak to your kind of creative motivations, somebody who's witnessed your work ethic. I think that that's really important. And somebody who's, who's witnessed your commitment uh, to becoming and learning and, uh, and experiencing new, you know, new ideas and, and somebody who can speak to your, to your ability to be taught. You know, some people are really talented, but, uh, but can be stubborn. And, uh, and I, th I think, you know, uh, we're going to be asking you to keep a really open mind and experience some things and some try some things that you, you've maybe never done before. So I think also, you know, find somebody who can speak to how uh, you deal with failure. That's a really big part of GSA is uh, students are going to be faced with failure and some students are going to be faced with real failure for the first time you know uh, i i can speak to that very very well as the ceramics instructor you know there's a lot of students who don't have any experience in ceramics and i'm i'm going to be pushing you into into some uncomfortable situations where you have to work very uh raw with your hands and uh, i think it, i think it's important that uh we understand how you're gonna how you're gonna respond to that to that situation. That's great. Thank you, Gaddy. And I just want to remind folks that um, it is not cheating to talk to your recommenders before they submit their recommendation about why you think um, they should give you glowing recommendations, things that you think that they should consider. It's then on the recommender to write an honest recommendation, um, right, that they feel like truly uh, describes, describes you and who you are. Um, but really encourage you to have some communication with your recommender in advance. Definitely don't let that recommendation form in their email inbox be a surprise. All right, I'm going to jump back over to our applicant guide. We'll continue on with our conversation. All right, you see we got some questions coming in, which is awesome. So moving on from the recommendation process, which again, as I scroll down here, you're going to see there's plenty of information for you all to take in about that. We're going to come to our personal short essay and our personal question video. So in this part of the application, we're giving you two essay prompts, essentially, uh, and we're asking you to reply to one in a written format and to reply in another one in a verbal format. So you can see here, part B, the personal short essay. This is a written response, 250 words max, to the prompt, describe your personal connection to your art form or creative practice, why and how is it important to you on a personal level, and then C, your personal question video. So this is a verbal response. 90 seconds max. Describe your vision for how your individual artistic work slash creative practice can impact others. How do you want to affect others through art? And or what response do you hope others have to your work? So Gaddy, tell us a little bit more uh, about as students are crafting these responses, um, you know, what they should keep in mind. Um, what, what are you looking for? What makes for a strong response um, to, to these essay prompts? I mean, the, the word that comes to mind uh, is truth. Uh, you know, we're, uh, we're going to ask you to dig deep. Uh, 
during the program and uh, the way the program is structured, uh, it's going to kind of really make you analyze yourself and why you do the things you do and why you make the choices that you make with your work. And I think spending a lot of time thinking about how to respond. Can you go, can you put that back up as a screen share real quick so I can just highlight a few things? The describe your personal connection. I think that that's really important there. You know, try and find something about your connection that is unique. Keep in mind that as adjudicators, we're gonna be looking at these in big chunks. So we're going to be looking at video after video after video. And uh, I think it's important to, to try and think about what everybody else is going to say. That's kind of a general statement about why we all make art. I mean, we all make art to express our emotions. We all make art to try and connect to other people. We all, you know, uh, try and inspire other people to make art. There's a lot of those kind of uh ideas that are pretty universal. Uh, so try and, try and really dig deep and find your personal reason. Uh, and some of you might not know, and it's okay to say that you don't really quite understand yourself yet. Uh, I mean, I'm 40 years old and I'm still trying to figure out why I'm obsessed with doing some of these creative things. Uh, but you know, why and how it's important uh, to you on a personal level, the, the word personal is really important. And I think the word truth is really important. And, uh, you know, these, these videos are going to be confidential. Uh, so it's okay to, to uh, be, be as open and as, on, you know, as honest and authentic as you can be. And uh, I think that's really important. Uh, the personal video, are we going to talk about the video right now too? Yeah, go for it. I think the, I think the video is, uh, it, it needs to be somewhat thought out, but not scripted. Uh, you know, I, I don't think it's really good to kind of have like the note card where you're kind of reading, but you might want to have some bulleted points that you know that you hit. And keep in mind too that, your first run at that doesn't have to be the one that you turn in. It's 90 seconds. So you might have to do a couple versions of it until you feel really comfortable with what you're saying. And uh, in order to get it all kind of bottled uh, in that 90 seconds, uh, sometimes we see some of them that are uh, people kind of are in a big hurry to get everything said. And then they have like a minute left and then some people are still talking when the 90 seconds cuts off. So trying to get, uh, get it all in there calmly, uh, but, but as upbeat as possible uh, and with as much energy as possible, because keep in mind, we're watching like bulk videos and reading bulk uh, personal essays all in big chunks. I do mine in like three hour chunks. So, okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Gaddy. Yeah, I just want to emphasize a couple things that you said. Um, the truth, I think, is absolutely um, spot on. We talked, and we did one of these earlier tonight with dance, and authenticity came up a lot. I think those are you know, two very similar things. Um, and, you know, something I tell applicants a lot is don't worry um, too much about, or really at all, about trying to tell us the most profound artistic wisdom that we've ever heard. Um, I think one thing Gaddy um, uh, mentioned that was really, really fantastic was it's okay to even say what you don't know um, to show that level of what I would call vulnerability in your videos. Um, we're not looking for uh, you know a bunch of 15, 16 year olds that have figured out the art world. We're looking to know where you are in your artistic journey, what's important to you, and to learn something about you. So don't don't show us what you think we want to hear. Um, instead, just allow us to get to know you a little bit with your answers to these questions. All right. So we are, oh, also one other thing I wanted to mention, um, with this personal question video, for instance, it's 90 seconds max. Um, do not worry if your video ends up being 91 
for 93 seconds. It's okay to go over a few seconds here and there. That being said, like Gaddy mentioned, we've got a lot of videos to go through, so maybe don't submit something that's you know three or five minutes long. Um, but if, if it's a matter of a few seconds, don't worry about it. All right, I'm gonna go back to the app guide, see more questions rolling in, which is awesome. All right, so the next section is uh, art form specific questions. Uh, and these are just a few questions we're gonna ask you about your uh, level of, of engagement and access to arts training. I've actually pulled up a test application for visual art. This is probably gonna look a little weird just because it's a test application that I've zoomed in on a lot. Um, but I just wanted you all to see these discipline specific questions for visual art. Um, if you haven't already started your application, because um, you can see these once you do start your application. We're gonna ask, um, have you ever taken private lessons in art, photography, or film? Um, if lessons from your parents and guardians count. Uh, and if you have, uh, we're gonna ask you in what medium or media. We're gonna ask if you're currently enrolled in art class at arts, uh, excuse me, if you're currently enrolled in art class at school, uh, how many years have you been creating art? Approximately how many hours do you spend making art each week? And what are your favorite materials or media to use? So pretty simple questions. I really want to emphasize there are no right or wrong answers to these questions. We are not secretly looking for something here. Um, we are not looking to weed out people who haven't had a lot of access to arts training, nor are we looking to weed out people who have had a lot of access to arts training. Rather, we're just trying to learn a little bit more about you, um, what you've had access to, because that can really help us understand um, your portfolio and your work in context. Um, Gaddy, is there anything else that you'd like to, to mention about that in terms of students who may be feeling um, nervous because maybe they haven't had as much um, access to like art classes or different types of mediums or media that they perceive other applicants might have had access to? Yeah, I mean, I think this is like one of the most common misconceptions about the process that, uh, you know, I, I know it's 80 now, but I'm, I'm going to sometimes slip up and talk about how it used to be, but we're not looking for the best quote unquote best, I could really tear into the word best uh, pretty bad. Like, what is that anyway? What does that mean? But the most polished, what, however you want to think about whatever your vision of what we're trying to do is, that we're not looking for that. We're not looking for the 36 uh, top artists in the state of Kentucky. That's not what this is about. This is about putting together a unique group of individuals who are going to share a common experience, a common goal, and a, and a common spirit. The, the GSA thing is a, it's a spirit of, of creativity and openness and vulnerability and all of these things that when we all get together, that we all support each other and trying to move forward, we care about each other and uh, we're gonna get through the three weeks and come out you know, ready to be out into the world and make a difference in, in our shared reality. And that's going to take on all kinds of different portfolios and people from all over the state. And you may be a really polished drawer, but that's not necessarily going to get your, your foot in the door. It helps, yeah, because we're going to be trying to teach some skills and we're going to try and develop some artists. But, but an artist is not a drawer. An artist is not a painter. An artist is not a, you know, necessarily a crafter. An artist is a, is a spirit of being, asking questions and asking hard questions and being okay with answering hard questions. Uh, so that's why it's all about truth because everything, you, every way you respond, we're navigating through this trying to pick a team. And, you know, I, I kind of look at it like, you know, like a, I, my son's a baseball player. So I look at it as a, like, kind of like base. We're looking for a shortstop and a shortstop and a catcher are not the same thing. And we're looking for, for a first baseman. We're looking for all these little pieces and every year 
that kind of looking around and searching is always different. It's never the same kind of combination of, of individuals. It's always different. And then we're always kind of interested that when we throw all these different individuals into the room, what have we created? So it's for us, it's a creative process just just picking the group. Does that help it? I, I know I know I know everybody wants like the the magic you know you you want the magic answer like you're on this webinar and it's and we live in a culture that's just so about like what is the answer you know just tell me what to what to put in the blank and i'll put that in the blank and I, i'm sorry it's just not that way uh i wish i could i wish i could give you the secret sauce but you're going if you take classes from me you're going to quickly learn the first thing i teach you is there is no secret sauce it's just passion and sweat and desire and want to and and determination and learning to get back up and dust yourself off and all those things. That's the secret sauce. And nobody wants to hear that, but it's the truth. And, and this application process is the same thing. You know, uh, it's just doing the work and being honest and being able to put yourself out there and no matter what happens it takes a lot of courage to put a portfolio together to answer these questions honestly and put that out in the world to a bunch of strangers but if you're going to do this life that's that's the journey is you constantly have to put yourself out there and sometimes it's going to hurt and then but and then sometimes you're going to be rewarded and it's weird that the hurt is what makes the reward feel so good, you know? So that's, that's my suggestion to everybody is just put it together, be open and honest and just know no matter what happens that it was not a, it was not a, a judgment about your work or a judgment about you as a person. It, it's just trying to put together a very complex uh, team and all of those choices are all made in all these different shades of gray. And there's no black or white or right or wrong. Well, and one th thank you, Gaddy. Um, that's all really um, awesome and, and helpful and informative. And I think one thing that I want to just emphasize that you touched on is that, you know, we're not just looking for the best painters and the best drawers, but we're also looking for the most passionate um, young artists. We're looking for uh, the young artists who are so eager and thirsty to learn more, who want to grow, who want to connect with other artists, um, who have potential. Um, and that is just as important um, and, and maybe sometimes even more important than your exhibited level of skill. Just something to keep in mind. All right, I'm gonna keep us moving. So you have time for questions toward the end. So we just talked about the art form specific questions. Now let's start talking about the artwork that you have to submit or that you get to submit uh, in your GSA application for visual art. So we're gonna start talking about sort of the, the meat of all of this, the portfolio. So you're gonna send us uh, images of, of your portfolio, your GSA application portfolio. The first thing I wanna point out, because there have been changes from previous years, is that uh, we are asking this year for a total of seven works uh, in the past, that number has been nine. So uh, we are ask, actually asking for two fewer works this year uh, as part of your portfolio. Um, just a quick note, if you're also applying for architecture and design, that's kind of a common um, uh, to, uh, art form pair that some of our applicants will, uh, will apply for. Um, architecture and design's uh, requirements are actually pretty similar to visual arts, but they're a little different. So I just wanna make a note um, to pay attention to detail there. But coming back to visual art, those seven total works, we're going to tell you the genre of, uh, or the medium, I suppose, of four of those required portfolio pieces. Uh, and then the other three, are, you have a little bit more um, choice and, and options um, to pursue. So out of those seven, there are four required portfolio pieces. So every applicant must have an object study, or AKA still life, a self-portrait, an environment, also known as a landscape, and new this year, a 3D, that's three-dimensional piece, made from recycled and or found materials. We've got a little bit more information about that in just a moment. So these four required pieces, one of them has to be in graphite pencil only, 
Um, for the others, you can use any variety of wet or dry media. Um, we, again, we've got more instructions in the 3D uh, piece below. And the self-portrait can be 3D as long as it's done from direct observation. Uh, if you do submit a 3D self-portrait, um, you still need to submit a separate um, 3D piece as the required 3D piece. And again, for all of these pieces, they need to be done um, from direct observation. Uh, drawing or working from photographs, um, you should not submit for these four pieces anything that you drew from a photograph. It should all be from direct observation. Um, and, and again, in that same regard, um, do not submit any digital illustrations for these four pieces. For your, again, that's object study, self-portrait, and environment, or, a 3D, or the 3D piece. We do have additional instructions about the 3D piece down here in this paragraph. Again, this is new if you've applied in the, in the past. Um, so we are, I'll, I'll let you all read this on your own, but we are essentially telling you that um, this 3D piece uh, needs to be something made from bound or recycled materials. So that can include, but isn't limited to, cardboard, paper, plastic bottles, old clothes, natural materials like branches and stones. Uh, and we want you to, you to create a 3D work. Um, and, and we're, you know, kind of leaving it as broad, and you might even say intentionally vague as that. We want to see you create some really interesting, um, we want, excuse me, we want to see you make some creative choices here. Um, so again, we'll come back to more of that in just a moment. But then you'll see the three remaining portfolio pieces. Uh, these pieces can be selected by you, but we encourage you to choose a variety of mediums or subject matter. Um, so again, this could be more drawing, more painting, more 3D, um, something else. Um, and you've got a little bit more information about that here. Uh, I'm going to pause there. Uh, there's a little bit more that you have to submit, but I want to pause on um, you know, these four required pieces and that 3D piece and the three additional pieces. Bring Gaddy back into the fold here. Um, Gaddy, I know this is a big question, but tell us a little bit more about um, these pieces, what makes a strong portfolio. And then maybe from there, tell us a little bit more about this 3D piece problem. It's kind of an interesting, unique addition. Put that in, put, can you put the screen share back up? I sure can. You just let second. me know if you need me to scroll, okay? Okay. So addressing the, the, the portfolio as a whole and, and addressing this uh, 3D piece, is it back up yet, Nick? There we go. Okay. So let me just say about the the requirement of, of drawing from direct observation in life. Uh, a, a lot of uh, beginning level students do a lot of grid drawings. And just believe me when I tell you that our drawing and painting professor <laughs> will know. Uh, I mean, she is super, super skilled. Uh, been teaching high school students for a long time and really has a really great grasp and understanding of how human beings draw and observe things from life. And we are definitely looking for a direct ob observation. And we know that it's not going to be perfect. But believe me when I tell you that perfection is the enemy. It's all the flaws and all of the, the subconscious little mistakes that you might think are mistakes that are actually the beauty in your work. And those little nuances are what make things human and what makes things truthful. And the way you observe things in real life and interpret them is the beauty that we're looking for. So just believe me when I say that your portfolio will, your portfolio will be stronger if you really adhere to these and let go of your of your preconceived notions about what is perfect and what we're looking for uh, and just and just do the truth. Uh, the 3D piece. Now, Governor School itself, is a work of art that's always evolving. Uh, and it's a, it's a creative collaboration between the admin team and the faculty and the students that's, that's always moving and, and stretching itself. And, and there's many iterations, especially over the last four years, we've really had a lot of different things happen. But the 3D piece in this portfolio this year is bore, born out of some things that we've done in the past. 
And what we did in the past was we introduced what we called the final prompt, which was when you found out that you uh, were selected as a finalist from the first round, we gave you another prompt that was all, always a three-dimensional piece. But we changed it every year. And we may change this one every year. And it's, it's the purpose of it was to force students to have to think on their feet. And you only had a certain amount of time to really deal with this prompt because we found that because our portfolio had been the same for so many years, that students were starting these portfolios seventh, eighth, ninth grade, and we were seeing work that had been like tweaked on and worked on for that amount of time. And while that has a lot of merit, and I don't want to say that that's not important to continue to work on pieces for a long period of time, the particular nature of governor school is we're going to give you a challenge and you have to just step up and knock it out and, and be willing to make mistakes. So we had this final prompt uh, and it kind of had this uh, found object uh, component to it. And, and we learned so much about each individual student and how they address that problem that we found it to be so important that we just made it part of the portfolio. And honestly, it was probably always necessary because half of the program is three-dimensional. I mean, you're going to be in sculpture and you're going to be in ceramics. And to be honest with you, we don't have a huge budget. You're not, you're not going to come to governor school and do a bunch of bronze casting or do a big installational metal piece and weld and, and do woodworking. You're going to work with found objects. A lot of, a lot of what we do in sculpture is, is kind of what most people would consider junk. So this kind of gets us down the road and maybe gives us some insight into how you're going to respond to the challenges of the 3D section of the studio. But we don't, we don't want this to be something that everybody runs out and tries to buy the most refined materials. Uh, it's not a, it's like not an economic competition. It's a creative kind of thing. Uh, so how you use the materials is more important than the materials. Like I said, these are the same kind of materials we're going to have at governor school. And we do some pretty amazing stuff with uh, stuff you, you might find laying around. Does that answer that question, Nick? Absolutely. I, I love um, this prompt. I'm, I think we're both really excited to see um, what students put together and um, just to, you know, Reemphasize what Gaddy said. If you've never even made a 3D piece before, this prompt is for you too. You know, we we want to see um, less your. Uh, I would say, Gaddy, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're less interested in seeing your three dimensional prowess and more about how you solve this creative problem. Right, and it yeah. and again, it's intentionally vague. Yeah, it's no accident that we didn't give you exactly what to do because when you come to governor school we're not necessarily going to tell you exactly what to make it's the program is not set up to be like now there are portions that are this way but but the sculpture department it's certainly the way brian runs it is hey what you got what, what's your ideas and then we find a way to make it happen i mean we've built six foot dragons we've built uh stuff that floats out in the air uh, all kinds of crazy stuff, all yeah. kinds of crazy stuff out of chicken wire and plaster and, and burlap sacks and plastic <laughs> bags. So anything's possible. That's awesome. Thanks, Gaddy. Um, moving along, um, the next thing that you'll submit is pretty straightforward. It's a portfolio cover sheet. This is basically just a reference document for us to look at while we look at your portfolio. Um, so we've got all the information there included that you'll um, include for each piece. So just a small reference image uh, of, of the work. Again, that does not have to be high quality. It's just so we can say, uh, oh, this, this is the drawing of the, the red elephant. Um, all right, I see now the higher quality image that they submitted in the previous section. And you'll let us know the title of work, year of completion, and some other basic 
information that's included here. And then finally, you'll uh, upload images of, of sketch work, sketchbook pages or 3D experiments. Um, so we're looking for five photos of basically something that reflects uh, your creative journey, um, your in-process work, your process of creating work. Um, so, Gaddy, anything you'd like to add about the uh, sketchbook images or 3D experiment images? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that, that that's just another layer of us being able to kind of see behind the, the curtain of your mind into what your process was. Um, and it's just, just another, uh, another little piece of information. And the sketchbook is actually really important because when we go to start building sculptures or we go to start making prints or we go to start making ceramic vessels, uh, your ability to sketch out your ideas is really uh, critical to our ability to guide you in your in, in your creative process. It kind of becomes the common vernacular um, and helps us solve problems before we get to problems in the in the physical world. Awesome, thank you. Uh, moving along, um, I will point out that the final round requirement section um, in the applicant guide is going to describe to you um, what you can expect if you're advanced to that final round. We're going to breeze past it today just because uh, you all have enough information to focus on at this point in the uh, process of the application process. But it is there for you to check out if you want to put your eyes on the prize and think about what it might be like when you advance to the final round. Uh, but then section four is our criteria section. Very important, very relevant section. So criteria are what, what your uh, application is being scored on. So if you were to um, see the score sheet that Gaddy or other visual art adjudicators were reviewing visual art applications, if you were to look at their score sheet, it would literally look like this piece of paper that you're looking at on the screen, except it would have numbers underneath one for score, uh, excuse me, underneath each section for scoring. So uh, the criteria for visual art uh, are use of formal art elements, use of design principles and sense of composition, technical skill, craftsmanship and sensitivity to materials and media, originality and creative voice, and dedication to art form growth and community. So you'll see under each criteria area, we have the name of the criteria, and then we have a sentence or two explaining how an ideal applicant might exhibit or show us that criteria. Um, so just to give you a, an aspirational uh, idea of what we're looking for. I will point out, um, as you've kind of heard us talk about, we're not just looking for technical skill necessarily, but also someone's spirit uh, and what they bring to the table by way of, of wanting to grow and being really excited about learning in, in their art form. So you'll see that that's that dedication to art form growth and community, we're actually scoring you on that as a part of your score. Um, so it's a very important part of the process. Uh, Gaddy, what, uh, anything you'd like to offer about the criteria, things for, for folks to think about? I mean, I think it's, I think the explanations under these are, are really, you know, really accurate. And it just, it just goes back to what we were talking about earlier that uh, there's not one way to to make an impression there are lots of ways to make an impression um uh, and you know yes we're going to give these like quantifiable numbers but believe me like that just becomes kind of a guide to to the next process where we look at the letters of recommendations and we look at your essays and we look at your your uh, your videos and we go back to these and we go back and forth and we try and if you say something in a video, you write something in a, in your, um, in your essay about you're trying to communicate this, we're going to go back to your portfolio and try and find that and say, oh, I see that. Okay. Oh, well, this, this student clearly has uh, a conceptual kind of path that they're clearly already walking down and that's a path that we can help them, you know, or uh, somebody might say, you know, I'm just really into being super technical right now and just learning how to really have some good drawing chops. 
And then we'll go back to your portfolio and see if you got chops. Uh, so it all kind of blends, you know, kind of all gets thrown in the blender and it just becomes another way for us to get to know you and help make a decision about, you know, how the team is all going to fit together. That's great. Thank you, Gabby. So um, one other thing I'll emphasize too is that these are, and, and Gabby mentioned this in, in so many words, but these are not weighted. So none of these are more important than the other. Um, and actually how we consider each of these may vary applicant to applicant because people are complex. And like Gabby said, we're looking for different types of folks to create a you know, diverse and com uh, complex community, a layered community, if you will, at GSA. So the final section of the applicant guide before we start uh, our Q&A se uh, section in earnest is the tip section. Um, so these are not just random visual art uh, of application tips. We actually work on these with Gaddy and the team um, every single year uh, to customize them for our process. And actually when Gaddy and I were planning for today, we don't normally go through this tip section, but we thought it actually might make sense just to kind of call these out um, because there's actually a, a relatively short list. Um, so these tips say, you know, include work completed outside of school when possible. That shows us your motivation to create work outside of what you're told or required to do. Incorporate recent work. Uh, pay attention to the presentation of your pieces and only include finished work. Of course, your sketchbook images don't count for that. Um, but, you know, avoid distracting blemishes or fingerprints, holding corners. Can I speak on that one, right? Yeah, right. I'd go for it, Gaddy. Absolutely. Like... I mean, within the first three tips is, you know, <laughs> a big jump uh, in student work right off the beginning. I mean, a lot of a, a lot of portfolio pieces are going to be clearly uh, school assignments that are very guided, and there's nothing wrong with that, and and that's fine, uh, but. You know, we're looking for those students who, who kind of go home and and uh, and are are doing their own thing too. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, er, you know, uh, earlier in the in the webinar about having recent work, I think that that's really important that we're we're seeing the work that you're kind of addressing right now that's fresh on your mind and and you're clearly mulling over some ideas and making some mistakes and and making gener generations of work. And then the presentation is so important. It is a visual language. And as such, any kind of little distractions away from what you're trying to say really makes it difficult in order to communicate visually. If the papers are folded, if they're torn. Now, if that's intentional, that's one thing. But if it's clearly kind of... Uh, born out of like a lack of care, then that says something about um, your commitment to your work. And that that's not an economic thing. That's just a, an intensity thing that I want my work to be as, as visually clear of what I'm saying as it can possibly be. Thanks, Gaddy. Let's see the other tips on here and Gaddy you just chime in if there's something you want to add. Um, diversify your portfolio with a mix of mediums. Uh, be prepared to show and talk about your process and this is especially if you're advancing to the final round. Um, present and present materials that represent variety and depth of processes. By showing multiple ways of solving uh, visual or conceptual problems you exhibit your ability to develop ideas. And if you haven't already begin to think about what makes your work distinctly yours. Again, uh, we're not saying that you have to prove to us that you are the most profound um, gift to the arts um, since the dawn of time, but uh, show us what makes your work yours. And that, that comes back to truth and authenticity. And then these last two um, points, uh, really important, pay, pay cl close attention to that adjudication criteria. Again, that's what you're being scored on. And finally, remember, and hopefully this is obvious based on this conversation tonight, Gaddy, uh, me, Paula, Ami, everyone else who's reviewing your application, we are on your side already. We want you to do well. Um, there is nobody that opens up their application at GSA and says, oh boy, I can't wait to rip this to shreds. 
uh, we <laughs> instead we open up each application and say, I'm so excited to see what this artist has to share with us. And I'm so excited to get to connect with that. Gary said this earlier, we understand it takes a lot of courage um, and, and ambition to put this application together and to submit it kind of into the ether and have you know some relative strangers review it. So we respect that and we respect you and your work. Um, so just hopefully that helps you have a bit more confidence putting yourself out there um, because we're already on your side. We want you to do well. Um, Gaddy, anything else from a tips perspective that you'd like to add? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of times, uh, you know, like I said, students kind of want the quick answer, but this is actually the one place I might say that there is a, a, a very clear answer. The challenge to these portfolios is to do two things at the same time, to show breadth and then to show depth. So to show breadth means to do something over a lot of different mediums and that you're trying a lot of different things. You're a young art, art student in the world. So we want you coming in like really wide. I'm willing to, to, to do it all, give it all a shot. And then depth means that even though it's all these things, different kinds of ways of working, that somewhere in there, there's a, there's a thread of commonality that uh, that weaves it kind of all together and it should be you. Either it, like Nick said, maybe it's kind of one common idea that you're working on. I'll just give you a, a, one example. Uh, last year, I believe it was, we had a student who oil painting, uh, sculptures, drawings, there was, it was a lot of black and white work. And then there was always like this one little pop of primary color somewhere just like it was like a beautiful drawing of this person in a suit with a bird head with a, with a red bow tie. And it was like the whole portfolio kind of had this kind of thing about it with this little pop of primary color. And then when it all went on the screen, it was like, that's clearly all the same person doing all these different things. But there's uh, the question is always like, what happens if I add in this boop, primary color right there to bring attention to that thing? And it was, it was a question that they were challenge, challenging oil painting. They were challenging the graphite pencil. They were try, challenging the sculpture to solve that problem in multiple different ways. It, it made for a strong portfolio. That's great. Although it doesn't necessarily mean that every portfolio has to have a theme, right? No, it doesn't have to have that. The, the theme doesn't, doesn't have to necessarily be visual, but sometimes it's just a way of, of handling a line you know how do i ha manipulate line in such a way that's unique to my hand you know uh the the common thread doesn't have to be thematic the common thread might be technical the common thread might be craftsmanship the i don't know what the common thread is but it helps if there's there's something that kind of binds it all together that's great thanks Gaddy. well let's uh go ahead and move on to our q a section um just uh, to review a few questions that we've already received, um, and just I, I'm not sure, honestly, from the um, folks attending, if you're able to see when we um, answer questions in text, or if that's only sent directly to the person who answers it. It looks it's like it's only um, sent directly to the person who answers it. I'm sorry, what? I believe it's only sent directly to the person who answers it. Awesome, thank you, Paula. So I'll just review a few of the questions that we've had today so far. Some really good ones, um, just so everyone can benefit from the answers. Um, so someone asked how many people on average apply for visual art every year? Um, and I actually happen to have um, the averages pulled up in a document today, so you get a very specific answer. Um, that's actually about 267 uh, over the past five years. Been our, our average number of visual art applicants, we've got up to 267 per year. Let me see. Um, I think there may have been a, an earlier version of the applicant guide that had the wrong duration of time for the um, personal question video. I'm not sure, but just to confirm that is 90 seconds is accurate on the applicant guide that's currently on our website. Um, that personal question video, um, can it be edited? And I believe we do have in the guidelines um, for that personal question in the applicant guide that it should not be edited or spliced. So we're really looking for something that is um, just one uh, continuous video and again that's just because we're looking for an authentic answer we'd rather see you I, I dare say um, kind of 
you know, try to find your words a little bit in one take than see something that's sliced and edited and is just Hey, but if, if slicing and editing video is your thing, there is film and photography. <laughs> there you go. Um, speaking of which, someone said, if I were to apply for film and photography instead, will I still have the opportunity to work with visual arts during my time at GSA? The first thing I want to mention to you is um, you can apply for both. Um, you could only attend for one. And if you didn't attend for film and photography, um, couldn't necessarily guarantee that you would be uh, in visual art at any time, but I will say um, that we do have a lot of interdisciplinary collaborations at GSA. It's an integral part of our program. Um, so it could be possible that film and photo would collaborate with visual art in some way, shape, or form. In fact, that happened this past summer. Um, I was going to say, that yeah. was probably one of the most powerful collaborations. We've done some really good ones for sure. But this one this past summer was really powerful and it was it was kind of born out of a necessity because of COVID protocols. We needed to all kind of stay in the same building and film and photography is upstairs. And they came down and interviewed our students and about their process and what they were working on and then put together these documentaries. And I don't know if these students would have access to those anyway, if they're like on a website somewhere. But uh, if you if you can get access to them. There are a few of them in there that are, they get me in my feels. Yeah, if you go to our uh, homepage and you scroll down a bit, I think there's a link for final student work. Um, oh, there it I, is. I, I think that that would probably be linked from there. So if anyone's interested in checking that out, it's a pretty cool project. Let's see here, got some other great questions for you, Gaddy. Um, can the sketchbook images include earlier drafts or inspirations from the for the required pieces in the portfolio? Not only can they, but that's a great idea. You heard it here, folks. I'm <laughs> glad you attended the webinar. <laughs> uh, how recent should work be this school year, or is it okay to put in favorites from previous years? I mean, I, there are no hard, you know, answers to any of this. I guess. But, um, you know, I think, I think we're all in the process of becoming and, and as close as we can get to that final version of who you are now, the, the, the better. But that doesn't mean that, that the story over years isn't important too. I would probably stay out of something from like middle school uh, unless you're super attached to it. And I, I might even lean away from something as, as from your freshman year just because you, you're getting better. Just doing something, you're going to naturally get better at it. And uh, and I, I want to see that you're working hard now, you know, not that you kind of like peaked as a freshman and maybe aren't spending as much time in visual art as you used to. I kind of want to see that you're on the you're, – you're, I want to catch you on the upstroke. <laughs> awesome. Uh, we have someone joining us. Uh, his name is Sawyer, and it sounds like Sawyer is an animator. Um, so Sawyer is asking what area would be best to apply for if I'm an animator. And I'll let you speak to that from a visual art perspective, um, Gaddy. Um, but one thing I will mention, Sawyer, is that um, you certainly can submit animation um, as part of your uh, film and photography portfolio, if that's an art form you choose to um, apply for. Now, I can't necessarily um, guarantee that um, your time in film photography would be focused on animation, um, although it, I also don't want to rule it out either. Um, you know, every year is a little bit different, um, but animation is not necessarily a core part of that curriculum that we know will happen every year, but I think that they'd probably be really interested in seeing um, your animation work. Um, Gaddy, from a visual art perspective, uh, again, I know that you know, animation is not necessarily a core part of the visual art curriculum, but do you have thoughts about um, animation and the portfolio and how that might fit into things? Yeah, I mean, I think all the same, all the same uh, uh, rules about composition and use of line and use of color and rhythm and balance and symmetry and asymmetry. I think all those concepts uh, about about making work still apply, and it, it it'll still give us a lot of insight into into how you make work and what your creative process is and and to be honest with you you know if um if we see your animation and it's powerful and it's it's truthful and and we feel like 
that uh, that kind of brings a unique flavor uh, and that that student might benefit from our program. And be honest with you, our program is kind of a classics program. It's, you know, it's, it's built on real traditional art forms. And, and that's just born out of a belief that if your foundations are strong, then any house you build on it will be strong. And uh, so uh, if we see something in there that we can, we can help, then, then I think it's, I, I think it's a viable, uh, we, we definitely embrace it as a legitimate art form. Uh, it will not be like looked down on or, or anything like that. Uh, I, would, I would say that would probably go for something like comic panels as well. Would you say so, Gary? That no, was totally. I mean, we get a lot of that work. I mean, it's, it's weird uh, over the last seven or eight years, since I've been involved with the program, we have seen a steady increase in illustration on computers and uh, uh, what's the animation over the last couple of years. And I think it's because the technology has been, has gotten so pervasive that uh, the, it's just more widespread and, and economically uh, more attainable for more students. We used to look at those fields as being kind of an economic out of balance, but now that all that technology, the price of it's come down, it, it's actually kind of a universally uh, readily available uh, medium. And it might even be cheaper than, than paints and oil paints. And as we move forward, like I said, you know, this program is still something that's developing and growing. And Nick and I have had many, many conversations about uh, digital illustration and animation and, and what the future of Governor School and, the, and our relationship with those mediums is going to be. Absolutely. Um, all right. Well, we've got a couple final questions here for you, Gaddy. Okay. Um, and also, yeah, just shout out to the animators and, and the, the, the uh, comic animators, too. I think that is such an awesome um, skill set to have uh, the idea of character creation and, and just uh, storytelling through art. Right. So, um, so I'm going to ask these questions back to back, partially because I think that they might both exhibit um, how there's no right or wrong, but rather there's just like creative decisions that people make. And <clears throat> a strong creative decision is one that you can back up, and a weak creative decision is maybe one that you can't, that you don't really understand why you're making it. Um, so somebody has asked, uh, how many school art projects would be acceptable for my portfolio? And then the other person has asked um, a, a question about using color in the portfolio. And I, I believe that uh, I'm going to interpret the question a little bit, Sam. Um, but if somebody doesn't use a lot of color generally in their artwork, um, would you encourage them to use color um, in their portfolio just so that they can make sure that they're showing you they know how to use it? even if their personal style is maybe to not use it as much. Let's take those as two separate questions. What was the, go back to the first one. How many school art projects would be acceptable for my portfolio? Yeah, there's no answer to that. Uh, I, I really can't give you like a, like a magic number other than to say, uh, we're definitely looking for students who are internally motivated, you know, that are making work because that's what they do. Not because it's a class they're taking at school, that, that that's just who they are, that's in their being, that's, I, that's me. You know, uh, I have an insatiable de desire to create things from my head in reality. I'm I'm the kind of person that if you put me in a waiting room long enough, I'm going to have all the magazines torn apart, folded up, and start building a sculpture. When we're, when we're in between baseball fields, I I take sticks and and build you know little buildings out of sticks and tie together with grass. I just my hands just go, and I just constantly make things and have questions. So that's that's what we're looking for. That person who sits at home and just can't help but doodle and create things. Um, that's the first one. The second one had something to do with color. Sure, and I, I'm, I'm interpreting the question a little bit, but I, I think I understand it. Um, 
so it sounds like some this person um, is saying like let's say that my style my artistic style doesn't use a lot of color or maybe they use less color than most um right. would you rather see that or would you rather see them incorporate some color into their portfolios so that you also see that they know how to work with color? Breath and depth. <laughs> you know, that's that's the unique challenge of this portfolio is to show a broad range of skill and your personal journey at the same time. Uh, and, and that those choices and that balance that has to be struck between those two things is a personal thing. If your if your personal aesthetic is so strong and so clear that you feel like I'm going all in on the way I make work and it's so good, it's so powerful that that's going to get me in, then okay. It, but if you feel like, ah, you know, I need to add a little tweak that I can still do something else. And my and my strength is that I'm kind of a jack of all trades. Ah, that's your choice. Uh, and I can't really I can't really guide you other than to say uh, there is no right or wrong. There's only truth. That's it's no right or wrong. It's only true. I think that's a pretty good way to end it, Gaddy. Okay. Um, well, thank you all so much for joining us this evening. Um, Gaddy, I really appreciate um, all your inspiring words and your information. Um, all of our applicants out there, uh, we look forward to seeing your application. Please be, in, please be in, in touch with any questions you have. You can call or email us anytime. Uh, be sure to take that survey, and you all have a great night. We'll see you later.